Hey, welcome into another episode of the Fat Guy Podcast. I am the Fat Guy. Most people just call me Brett Mason. Thank you so much for uh, checking out the uh, podcast again today. I'll tell you, I've watched consistently as the number of people who listen to the podcasts have increased week to week, month to month, and it's just um, it's amazing to me because my goal in life is to help people, and um, ultimately, I'd like to be able to turn this into. Um, you know, a, a way to make a living, but that hasn't happened. And if it never happens, I'm still going to keep helping people because it's what brings me joy in life. So it means the world to me that you're here. I usually wait till the end of the podcast to say this, but I'm going to say it at the beginning of the podcast. If you have a friend on your, you know, you have followers on Twitter, or you have followers on Facebook, followers on Instagram that are 50 pounds, 75 pounds, 100, 150, 200 pounds overweight, You could potentially do them the biggest favor of their lives by sharing this podcast on your social media. That's kind of how I found keto, and it's definitely changed my life for the better. And you never know whose life you'll impact. Um, I know you're probably here because you want to make changes in your life. But at the same time, you can go ahead and pay it forward and share the link to this podcast on your social media because you just never know whose life you'll change. And um, that's really about the only thing that brings me joy in life anymore is uh, seeing other people change their lives and knowing that I have played some small role in it. And it's it's as simple as people making changes on their own because they were inspired by something I posted all the way up to people that I've worked very closely with personally. And um, no matter what range on the gamut that spans, it just brings me immense joy. You don't even know. So you just never know whose life you'll change. So... Hit the share button. So um, we'll get some disclaimers out of the way, and then we'll get right to this protein issue because I'm finding people are so uh, discombobulated over protein with a ketogenic diet. So we're going to knock it out for you. Um, Who am I? Well, I'm a guy that's been fat since I was four or five. I've lost 125 pounds. So coming from a guy that there's only been, I think, two or three times in my life I lost weight. I remember losing around 20 or 25 pounds when I was in high school. It didn't last very long. I gained it all back and then more. And then I remember um, sometime in the early 2000s, I went on this diet where I just ate tuna fish sandwiches and pretzels. <laughs> That's literally all I ate. And I think I lost about 30 pounds then, but that's just not sustainable. You can't wake up and eat tuna fish sandwiches and pretzels every day. Um, And then uh, I tried a product and I did lose some weight on the product and was actually reasonably successful with it. And I fully credit it with me beginning this serious journey that arrived, caused me to arrive at where I am now. And that journey went from that product, it went to raw veganism, it went to whole food veganism, and eventually went to keto where I am now. And now I've lost 125 pounds and I still have weight to lose. So I'm not a doctor. I don't have any medical training. So anything you hear in this podcast is just my opinion and my own life experiences. It is not medical advice for you and it is not intended to be personal weight loss advice for you. So please take it for what it is. You should always consult with a doctor before you begin a weight loss or diet change, okay? Subscribe. Subscribe is the way to make sure you never miss fantastic content. And there's several ways you can do that. Of course, you can follow us on the social media no matter what social media you prefer one or all of them fat guy podcast is the username so snapchat add me instagram add me facebook go find the facebook page and follow it and twitter go uh, follow me on twitter at fat guy podcast is the username for all of those now a lot of people listen to the podcast for the first time they've never listened to podcasts before and i'm so honored that my podcast has caused someone to start being a podcast person because i love podcasts i listen to i probably listen to 15 or 20 different podcasts i love podcasts that's my not only is it entertainment for me but it's a way of educating myself there's some really smart passionate people out there podcasting Um, I aspire to be one of them, although I don't know if I am. So if you're new to podcasting, look, the easiest way to get the podcast is to go download the Spreaker app. That's the company that hosts my podcast. They have a free app, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. Download the app, no matter what kind of device you have, they have an app for it. Once you download it, go search for Fat Guy Podcast. Once you find me, uh, hit the follow button and the heart button, I think it is, uh, the like or whatever. 
and you'll get notified when new episodes come out. And you can also easily scroll back and see any episode I've ever done. I had somebody yesterday ask me about electrolytes, and I'm like, you know what? I did a very detailed podcast about that. Um, go hit up the uh, podcast link and scroll back, and you'll find it. And they did. So it's a really great resource. Now, if you're a person that's very familiar with podcasts, you already listen to them using the podcast app on your Apple device or whatever uh, uh, app you use on your uh, Android device, it's fine. We're available there, too. Just search for Fat Guy Podcast. Um, the website, if you're just a person that likes websites, you can go to thefatguypodcast.com, and you'll see all the podcasts archived there as well. So there's a ton of ways to listen. The key thing is to just do it. So I'm going to take a sip of a drink here. I'm going to do a podcast about this drink, by the way. Uh, Wet the old whistle, as my dad would say. And let's jump into this protein issue. So what prompts me to do this podcast is everybody I've worked with has issues with protein. Well, figuring all the macros out, really. Like everybody gets the 20 carbs. I don't mean they do it, but everybody gets it. Oh, 20 carbs. I get that. But then there seems to be a lot of ambiguity between fat and protein, and then there's a lot of misinformation out there about protein, so I wanted to address that. Um, yeah, there's this process called gluconeogenesis, where I'm oversimplifying this, so if you're a really informed person, don't laugh at the way I'm explaining it. I'm just explaining it in the simplest way possible because the technicalities aren't important. But your liver can convert fat into sugar, basically, for your for parts of your body to run on. And so for the longest time, there was this misconception, or I should say over-dramatization, that if you ate, you know, you eating 5, 10 grams too much protein, all of a sudden glucogenesis, neoglucogenesis kicks in, and your body's just converting a bunch of carbs, and you can't get into ketosis, and you're not, even though you're trying to eat 20 carbs or less, this um, uh, gluconeogenesis thing is happening, and and I think I just said that word wrong earlier. <laughs> uh, but nevertheless, that's, research shows that while that happens, there is a process that converts uh, fat into sugar 100%. It's done it on an as-needed basis. It isn't necessarily done on an I eat too much protein basis, if that makes sense. Um, I actually read uh, some research on this uh, last night as I was thinking about doing this podcast. And I went and read this um, this one study, um, which, which confirms some other studies, and then some other things that I've heard other experts in the field talk about. And that is, just because your liver can convert fat into sugar... Uh, or I'm sorry, protein into sugar. I don't know why I said fat. Just because it can do it doesn't mean it does it once you hit a certain protein threshold. In other words, oops, I went, I, I ate 10, 15 grams too much protein. My body's going to convert all that extra it doesn't need into sugar. It, that, it doesn't necessarily work like that. It can do it, and it does it on an as needed basis. So let's say for some reason your brain wasn't running off glucose. Now, again, I'm not quoting exact percentages. I'm using this as an example. There's a percentage of your brain that can't run off ketone bodies, um, which is you know what you're running off of when you're in ketosis. You're running off of uh, various ketone, uh, ketone bodies. And so you do need a small amount of um, glucose to run that portion of your brain but your body's perfectly capable of creating it and that's how it does it it does it in the liver it creates whatever small amount of glucose it needs and you don't ever have to eat it there is no um uh glucose or carbs or sugar that you must eat you've heard of essential fatty acids and you've heard of um, essential amino acids well those are fats and proteins that you must eat because your body can't make them so you have to eat some fats and you have to eat some proteins or you'll die. But there are no carbs that you have to eat. You never have to eat a carb ever. Your body is perfectly capable of making all the carbs it needs. So this uh, gluconeogenesis thing, it happens on an as-needed basis. Now, I'm going to give you some anecdotal evidence of this. I say anecdotal. It's it's anecdotal because it's coming from me. I don't think it's a- anecdotal in the larger sense. Um, I think it's p- relatively proven in the larger sense. But from me, coming from me, it's just anecdotal. 
because I'm not a researcher and this, I'm not referring to research. It's just I know a few people who are carnivores. I actually follow several people on Twitter who are carnivores. So what do they do? They just only eat meat. Um, 90 or 95 percent of their diet is meat, steak, and hamburger meat mostly. Um, there's an amazing young lady that I follow on Twitter who's a carnivore. She's been a carnivore for like eight or ten years, and she started out big as a house, and she's thin as a rail now, super healthy, all her numbers and all that stuff, her blood tests come back great. And she eats a pound or two of beef for her first meal of the day, and then four, five, six hours later, she eats another pound or two of beef. Usually it's hamburger meat, but she does eat steak sometimes. But that's mostly her diet. Now, sometimes she'll throw in some egg because um, eggs are good. Um, sometimes she may have a little cheese, but basically, I don't know what the percentage would be. 95, 96, 97% of what she eats is protein. She's eating a ton of protein. She ain't getting fat. <laughs> she went from being very fat to being very slim. She's a matter of fact, she's incredibly slim. Um, I know uh, a couple of different men that are carnivores uh, that I follow. Same thing. They just only eat protein. So if this whole concept of uh, you eat too much protein and it turns into carbs and then you get fat and you're out of ketosis, if that were true, none of these carnivores would be losing weight. So that's the overall picture I want I want to help you understand today. If you're trying to do keto and you haven't lost weight, it's it's because of one or two things. You're not doing it right. You're eating more carbs than you think you're eating. And you're eating more food than you think you're eating. So I had a conversation uh, yesterday with somebody about this. Um, a ketogenic diet isn't magic. You can't overeat on a ketogenic diet and still lose weight. Like there's no, there's no magical process that happens inside your body that suddenly makes you immune to eating tons of calories. Um, I plan on doing a whole podcast on this too, but I'll throw it in briefly here. The reason you lose weight so easily and lose so much weight on a ketogenic diet really doesn't have a whole ton to do with the fact that you're in ketosis. And I try to tell everybody, stop obsessing over being in ketosis. I can't tell you how many quote unquote experts I've seen out there that says when you check your blood, and uh, I'm not talking about the pee strips, I'm talking about when you actually check your blood for ketones, and I have a blood ketone meter, so I can check mine. When you actually check your blood ketones, they should be between 0.5 and 1.5 as optimum. Well, let me tell you something. I've lost 125 pounds, and other than the couple of times that I've been on extended fast, which has happened twice, my ketones have never really even hit 0.5. They're usually in the 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 range, something like that. They don't even get up to 0 0.5. This chasing high ketone levels is preposterous. The... the, the what you want to do is you want to keep your insulin levels low. That's that's the goal. You keep your insulin levels low. You eat enough fat so that you're not hungry all the time, and so you just naturally eat less. And that's the magic of the ketogenic diet. And I try to make everybody understand that. There's no magic sauce going. There is magic sauce going on inside, but it's kind of irrelevant as to understanding what I need to continue doing to lose weight. What you need to continue doing to lose weight is continue to eat your macros. In a ratio such that your carbs are really low, your insulin level stays low, and you eat protein and fat in ratios so that you are satiated and you're not hungry all the time. That's why I talk about fat being a lever. So you kind of need to figure out how much protein you need. Now, I'm just going to give you some rough guidelines, okay? So understand when I give you these guidelines... This is something you're going to need to play with to see how you feel. So eat a few days of one way, and then if you need to up it a little bit, see how you feel, okay? This is something I can't do for you. I was talking to somebody yesterday, and I told them, they, they're like, oh, it's too complicated. I don't do all that. It was like, it's not complicated. You just eat a certain amount of protein for a few days, and if you feel fine, stick with it. If you don't, let's up it. Or if, it, if you start out high, let's lower it. I mean, you figure out. you. It's remarkable how much you can learn by listening to your body, okay? So. For women, about the lower end of protein for women, and this is if you're a short woman, woman, is about 65 grams of protein a day. All right, so for a woman, you want to be eating 65 to maybe 80 
grams of protein a day, maybe 85 at the upper end or something like that. Let's do Let's just do a 20 gap margin. Let's do the extreme end. So let's say 65 to 85. So, you know, if you're four foot nine or five foot tall, you know, probably down that lower end, 65 to 70 is probably how many grams of protein you should eat a day. If you're five eight, five nine, five ten, you're probably going to be up in the eighty range or maybe eighty five range. So based on how tall you are, just try to pick a, a number and stick with it a few days and see how you feel. And you need to get that protein every day. Once you figure out the protein level that works good for you, make sure you never go under it, and then hit it within ten points or something. So if you figure out you know seventy five grams works for you, always hit seventy five. Some you know, some days you might hit 73, 74, whatever. Just stick for 75 on the bottom end, and then some days you may hit 80, may go over a little bit. But try to keep it in that range. For men, your bottom is going to be around 75. So you're going to hit 75 to 95, 100-ish. So, you know, again, if you're a five foot five guy, you may be down around 75, whatever. If you're a six foot four guy like me, you're going to be closer to 100. You may be 80, 85, 100. I'll tell you this though, I feel great and operate great with about a, about an 80, and I'm six foot four. So my protein around 80 grams a day is generally where I feel best. But there are, look, there's days I eat 120 grams of protein. It happens, but I'm saying on average what I try to shoot for. Now. That's the second thing you lock in. We lock it in in stages. Your carbs are locked in at 20 or less a day. That's the first thing you lock in, and that doesn't change. You know, it may change a year from now or two years from now when you've lost a ton of weight and you're more metabolically flexible, and you can start moving that up to 30 or 35 or 40 or 45 grams of carbs a day or whatever. But easily for the first year, you're going to stay at 20 because you want to lose weight. You want to get your metabolism back working right. You want to get your insulin sensitivity back right. And the only way to do that is by keeping those carbs down. Second stage is figuring out what your protein is, okay? So that's basically what the podcast is about today is protein, and we've covered it. I'm going to top the cake with a little bit of icing, to use a horrible phrase, <laughs> for a keto podcast. And... Talk about fat briefly. So your fat is always going to be equal to or higher than your protein. So if you're eating 80 grams of protein a day, you're going to be eating 80 grams of fat a day. Now, your fat will will be determined greatly by a couple of things. If you're just starting keto or if you've been doing keto four weeks. And the second thing... Are you going five, six hours without getting hungry, or are you getting hungry two hours after you eat? That's the main way to know if you're eating enough fat. Um, Secondarily, which which will happen after a week to 14 days of being keto, is you'll get where you can skip breakfast. You should be able to skip breakfast, okay? And you should skip breakfast. Even if it's hard for you, you should skip it. You know, breakfast is something you should no longer eat. And I've talked about this in numerous podcasts. I'm not going to go over it too much here. Breakfast is the worst meal of the day. The The time you burn the absolute most amount of fat that you'll ever burn is when you're normally eating breakfast. So from, you know, if you get up 6, from 6 to 11 in the morning is when you're going to be burning the most fat. If you get up at 7 or whatever, you know, from 7 to 11 or 7 to noon or whatever, that's when you're going to burn the most fat. So skip breakfast. We're starting at lunch. Now, if you're on a weird schedule, translate those times to your schedule. I understand there's night workers, third shift workers. Same thing. Four to five hours after you get up, you don't eat. You should be able to do that. After you've been keto for 10 days or 10 to 14, I'd say at least, you should not have many problems with that. You shouldn't wake up hungry. So once you eat your lunch, if you you eat lunch at noon and you're hungry again at 2, you didn't eat enough fat. If you eat dinner at 6 and you're hungry again at 8, you didn't eat enough fat. Fat is the lever. Fat is your hunger lever. You move it up to keep you from getting hungry. You move it down to the to whatever the minimum you can move your fat to so that you're not getting hungry two hours after you eat. That's where you keep it because remember, fat is the most amount of calories and calories is a big component of weight loss. Insulin is a huge part of weight loss, but that doesn't mean calories aren't a part of weight loss. They still are. How much food you eat still matters. We don't worry about counting calories, but that doesn't mean that they don't matter. So if you can get, let's say you're eating 80 grams of protein a day. If you can get away with eating 80 grams of fat 
and you can go from noon till six without getting hungry and have your two meals and then you're skipping breakfast six, then you're doing fine. Just keep it at 80. Um, now, this is after you've been keto a while. I'm going to go back to when you first go keto. So this is, you know, this is after you've been keto 10 to 14 days. So you're going to start playing around with it, okay? And you just slide it. And if you eat lunch at 12 and you're hungry again at 2, make a mental note of that and go, wow, eating 80 grams of fat wasn't enough. I'm going to bump it up to 90 or 95 grams uh, tomorrow at lunch and see how I do. And you play around with it and you'll hit it. And you'll hit that number to where you're not getting hungry after you eat and you're fine. And you'll stick that number for a while. Now, after you've been keto for a while, you can bring that fat on down because you'll get so good at burning body fat that you won't have to eat fat externally. And that's the way this works. It's There's not one set keto. No, there's not one set of micros for you and then you eat them forever if you're in this for weight loss because your body will continually adapt. Your body's going to get better and better and better at burning the fat that you have stored and the more fat you burn that you have stored, that's the less fat you have to eat externally. You get that same satiating effect, uh, effect without having to stick the fat in your mouth. Does that make sense? So when you first start out, your body isn't good at burning fat off the body. So we're going to keep it satiated by eating fat. And that's going to do two things. It'll keep us satiated and it's also going to tell your body, here, here's what we're burning for fuel, idiot. Come on, get with the plant. And your body's going to start burning fat. It'll get better and better and better at it. And soon, it'll just go to your fat stores with no problem. The second your body feels it needs energy, it'll go directly to your fat stores for uh, for energy, and you won't feel hungry. And once you get to that stage, and that happens at different points in people's journeys, you can bring the protein, uh, the fat level down. Your fat level could even start dropping below your protein number. I just use that as a starting point. But as an example, you know, Two months down the road, three months down the road, your body is an awesome fat burning machine. You may be eating 80 grams of protein a day and you may only be eating 60 grams of fat a day or whatever. So you just have to pay attention to your body. And I know this is a podcast about protein, but they're all, they're just all combined together. You can't, you can't, it's kind of hard to do one without the other. My last thing about fat, when you first start keto, your fat can be high. You really can't eat too much fat. I tell people the first seven days or so that they're on a keto with me and I'm working with them, I don't care how much fat you eat. I don't care if it's 100 grams, 120 grams, 150 grams. You eat fat. I don't care. I don't even care if you're eating too much food. I don't even care if you're gaining weight, which I don't think has ever happened. But it is possible if you were eating a ton of fat, you'd be eating so many calories, you could actually gain weight. Because that first 7 to 10 days is nothing about cramming fat in your body and making your body switch to it. So you've got two things. You're adapting to a fat burner, a fat eater. Your metabolism is changing on the inside. And I don't want you to get hungry. I don't want you to even think about hunger. So I don't care how much fat you're eating that first 10, 14 days, 7, 10, 14 days, however long it takes. But at some point, your your internal metabolism will start changing and you'll your body will start burning fat more efficiently. And you can start backing the fat down. And so we won't be eating insane amounts of fat. And, I, and I'm not saying you have to start out eating insane amounts of fat. What I'm saying is, is it doesn't matter. And so when people get hungry the first week, I'm like, cram some more uh, fatty food in your mouth. <laughs> I don't care about the calories. Oh, you, you ate at noon and you were hungry again at one? Fine. Go grab some high-fat keto something and cram it in your mouth. Um, and we just keep doing that until we don't have hunger issues no more because we want to switch our body over to being a fat burner. So I know we got into fat there at the end. Um, I probably should have just saved that to another podcast all about fat, but it's kind of hard to do protein without doing the fat. But know this, you aren't eating too much protein and kicking yourself out of ketosis. It just isn't happening. Okay. Look, I'm not saying there's, there's no set of circumstances where it can't happen. Of course there is. Generally speaking though, if you're eating keto reasonably correctly, you're not eating enough protein to kick yourself out of ketosis. Uh, that being said, the person I talked with yesterday, I think they said they'd have been eating like two, as a woman too, a shorter woman. Not short, but you know, a woman, regular sized woman. She'd eat like 210, 220 grams of protein a day. That's a lot of freaking protein. 
as a lot of protein. And so what does that do? Uh, well, if you're, if you've, uh, become a fat burner and you don't have a problem with being a fat burner, you can get by with eating that much protein because your body's going to be burning fat off the body. But if you're try- just starting out trying ke- to get into ketosis, never happened. Your body isn't used to burning fat. And so you're feeding it a bunch of protein. So it still thinks that it's a, a sugar burner because you aren't feeding it a bunch of fat and you haven't force fed it fat. So you've ch- caused it to switch over. And so absolutely it could be possible. It could be possible that there's some, uh, some, uh, uh, gluconeogenesis going on there. Nevertheless, that's neither here nor there. If, you, if you, that's that's an extreme example. All right. Once again, guys, follow me on the social media. Fat Guy Podcast is a username. No matter what social media you like best, add me on all of them. Why don't you? Especially Snapchat. I try to share what I eat on Snapchat. I'm trying to do that more. I need to do that more on Instagram with stories. But it just gets so much. There's so many different social medias. It's hard to keep track of all of them. Um. Download the Spreaker app, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. Download that app. Search for Fat Guy Podcast. Follow us. Hit the heart button. Like it. Subscribe to it. You'll get notifications about new episodes, and you can easily scroll back and see older episodes. And the one thing great about the Spreaker app is it's not just my podcast. There's thousands and thousands of podcasts on there, so you never know what else you'll find on there that you'll like. I highly recommend that app. It's really cool. And if I ever do live shows, you'll be able to catch them live on that app. And I am going to be doing some live shows. And uh, so that'll be cool. Um, And then share this. Share it with somebody. Just share it. Share it. You don't have to share it with them personally. You don't have to worry about hurting their feelings. by Them thinking, oh, they think I'm a fat pig. They're sharing. No, don't do that. Just share it on your page. Share it on your wall. Share it on your Instagram. Share it on your Twitter. Uh, You never know whose life you'll change by sharing it. Thank you so much for listening today. I hope you have a fantastic day. We'll talk to you next episode.